here, Martin here, and welcome to Turner's Journey episode 59. I hope you're all well and you have had super creative months in, uh, in your workshops and have been doing a lot more turning than I have recently. As, uh, as you would have seen, um, I've been building a new workshop over the last few months, which is why I haven't been able to post videos um, very often. Um, other than the occasional Turner's journey. Um, and again, I'm going to apologise for that. But I will be back at it um, as of next week. Um, because of a couple of problems and stuff, um, I'll be able to video on Wednesday and have the video up hopefully on, uh, on Thursday next week. But uh, I'm in the workshop, as you can see, and uh, this is my little corner. So I've got the new... Um, Nova Galaxy DVR lathe which is just lovely. I'll do a review of the lathe um, in a video in a few weeks probably um, and you'll probably recognize most of the stuff up there behind me um, all the colors and the stains and stuff and there's a tool rack over there and what have you. Yeah so it's all it's all come together quite nicely in the end and um, I can't quite believe we only kind of started this at the end of August, so we're now in the middle of November and we've done a vast amount of work. Let me just do you a little a little spin round so you can see sort of what's what. Right, so that's um that's my corner. Now up here if I'll just turn around a little bit. Um up here, the new cameras for the videos and stuff are all sort of scattered around the lathe and the workbench and stuff. And up here is um, is a monitor, so I can keep an eye on what's going on with the videos. And also, when I'm doing a demonstration in here, um, people will be able to get a nice a nice close up view of um, what's going on from a from a safe distance. But if I turn around a little bit more. Over here, behind this wall panel is my old Myford lathe. Um, I haven't quite finished sorting out that area just yet. And also the um, sort of office desk area over there isn't quite finished. Um, but I'll talk to you about that in a second. And then as we come round here, we start to pick up the... Nova Comet, so there, there are three Nova Comet lathes over there. It's a bit underexposed because of the uh, the light. And then round there, towards that side, there's a fourth Comet lathe as well. Let's just straighten that out. There's a fourth Comet lathe and um, loads of storage space. and then we come back to my corner. The Hampshire Sheen Shed I was talking to you about um, in the last episode, uh, which was a couple of weeks ago, still hasn't arrived. Um, again, I ordered that in the middle of September and, that, and they've just been fobbing me off with excuse after excuse as to why it's not here. Um, and the customer services manager over there um, has now got his act together and uh, sorting it out. So the new shed should arrive today as well. That would be uh, that would be nice if it does. Um, I've had a few inquiries for demonstrations as well, and indeed I did a demonstration over at the Berkshire Woodturners Association the other night, which was great. So if any of you are watching, hello, thank you very much indeed for making me feel so welcome. Um, this is the piece I turned. Um, very very bright very very bright colors it was a, a coloring and texturing workshop so we did I did that in um, the second half of the demonstration and then I did the texturing and color uh, texturing and a bit of coloring um, on the back <clears throat> in the first half of the demonstration um, I really enjoyed it and I, I was made to feel very welcome so Berkshire Wood Turners Association thank you very much indeed um, and I've also got an inquiry for Bristol and Avon um, 
Wood Turners as well, which I need to respond to. So I'm looking forward to the possibility of heading over there too. Now the DVR, the DVR lathe is super. Um, the very few pieces I've turned on it have have been just a dream to turn. And I think the intelligent motor that draws more power to keep your revolutions, your your RPM as you set it is is great. I've noticed that sort of a bit of a um, an improvement certainly in the in the speed of turning I think but it's early days yet so I'll let you know in a few weeks what I think but I have turned this this sycamore dish which was the the beginning part of the the Berkshire demonstration um, and I just turned the outside of that to, the outside of that to illustrate the nice curve that I like and then when I got back to the workshop yesterday um, I finished finish the inside of it and because I've got a 16 inch swing on this lathe I thought yesterday that I would kind of put it through its paces a little bit you, um, if you spin the head round and use the outrigger you can have up to 29 inches which is great um, but I turned that instead um, which is a uh, it's about 14 inch um, spalted beach I guess it could be some kind of large salad bowl. Um, I don't know really. It's a bit platter-like, sort of a bit platter-like, but it's lovely. It was a dream to turn. Um, it's just been finished down to 240 with a couple of coats of Danish oil um, on it. It needs some more. It needs some more Danish oil, um, which I'll put on today, and then maybe another um, another couple of coats over the weekend, and then put it up for sale on Monday or Tuesday or something like that but no this was great and it was lovely to be able to turn a really big piece again so there will be some rather large format pieces coming in videos in the future for you and we're getting into Christmas yes the Christmas season so everybody's going to be turning hundreds and hundreds of snowmen and uh, Christmas decorations tree decorations and stuff like that and um, I don't think I will be, um, mainly because of time. Um, I've, I've still got a lot of stuff to do and sort out um, with my own website, the Black Dog Workshops website, and of course the UK and Ireland Wood Turning Symposium too, because that's uh, that's coming up in July. Um, but there's still a lot of work to do with that. So Christmas is going to be an interesting season for me this year. Um, turning I can turn some snowmen I might turn a few um, Christmas tree decorations but for the most part I'm not really going to have a vast amount of time to produce for uh, the Christmas trade at least I don't think so the way things are working out in my head at the moment I don't think I'm going to have enough time to put it all put it all together um, but who knows, I'm, I'm, I might do. I'd like to, but to be honest, I'm not a production turner. So turning snowman after snowman and Christmas decoration after Christmas decoration will probably very, very quickly drive me spare. But having said that, where did I put them? Over there. Yeah, um, but having said that, um, I did buy some a few Christmas decoration kits and um, a few bits and pieces just enough to um, keep me going I think and I may even be able to do um, some uh, some workshops here in the in the workshop or some courses um, for people if they want to come and turn some baubles and what have you um, so and then that I was having a conversation the other day um, about finding the right price point and it's it's something that goes on and on and on finding the right prices and I think a lot of people um, I've got to choose my words carefully um, undersell the stuff that they make um, not perhaps just on a face value but also when they're working out the costs so you've got a blank, let me find a blank, 
you've got a blank and it might cost you three or four quid or say five or six dollars or something like that um, and you turn it and you want to put a price on it how, how are you going to price that up um, some of you out there might go oh yeah I'll, it'll be three or four quid um, for the blank um, plus an hour for my time so let's call it 15 quid okay fine so we've got a bowl there that's 15 pounds so you've got say 10 pounds in your pocket or 10 dollars in your pocket and you've got enough left over to buy yourself another blank that's okay but how many people think about the other um, expenses that go into making something you've got the wear and tear on the lathe um, the belt's going to need replacing at some point the tools are going to get shorter they're going to wear away with the grinding in between in between each piece that you turn so that's going to need replacing at some point your finishes your waxes your oils um, your sandpaper you've got to drive to the craft fair um, or the, the craft market or whatever and then set up and then you've got to pay the pitch so oh and then you need to pay yourself to be there as well so and, unless you don't mind giving up your time for free um, so there's a lot of other expenses or um, expenditure that quietly eat away at the bottom line of the price of your bowl um, and we haven't even talked about adding on anything for profit um, hobbyists, a lot of hobbyists won't worry too much um, about turning a bowl for profit they just want to turn and sell to fund their hobby um, and that's a whole other um, that's a whole other discussion but when you are pricing something think much more deeper than just a bit of money in your pocket and replacing the bowl blank because there are those things that just disappear tools will disappear what if what if the what if your belt on your on your lathe breaks where's the money going to come from to replace it oh it's going to come from your pocket but you've just paid yourself the time to make this bowl but now you've got to take money back out of your pocket to replace the belt on the lathe lots of things to think about when pricing up for the christmas season so i hope that's useful and that's certainly something i think about that's a long discussion and i think that will be the subject of um, a live discussion um, and talking of live um, live discussions i'm going to be doing um, in the next couple of weeks hopefully a live um, a facebook live thing on my um, black dog workshop members group uh, now those of you who are members of the m saban smith website i'm going to put you on to um, a membership of the black dog workshop thing because i think this is quite quite important um, that i thank you even more than I have done already for your your financial support over the last few months and I'm very aware that I haven't actually been able to produce um, a video for you but that will change so if you are a member of the um, M. Saban Smith website to support the free videos that I do um, I'm going to try and track you down via Facebook um, and add you to the Black Dog Workshop group um, which is a private group, and I'll be doing a live, um, a live talk and a big live Q and A thing um, in the next couple of weeks. So that's um, that's that. Now there are a couple of other things that I, I did want to mention today, um, but I think I'm kind of been blah 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 blah. I've been going on a little bit too much. Um, so I will have to try and remember to mention them for you next week, um, and you should next week have a project video to uh, to view um, using this new camera setup and I hope it will be I hope it will uh, meet expectations um, I don't know what I'm going to do yet it may well involve color or it may well involve um, some metal stuff but anyway uh, thank you once again for sticking with me everybody i really 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 do appreciate it and normal service will be resumed very soon 
Thank you very much indeed for watching. If you do want to know anything more about the Black Dog Workshop, head over to that channel and um, you can see the, uh, the update video that I need to do um, for those subscribers very shortly. Right, thanks very much guys. I will see you again soon. Bye for now.